Hey, everybody. It's the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy here with Misha Pollan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. <laughs> Gets it every time. The <laughs> and uh, so remember, you know, for like more than two years, liberals were obsessed with this uh, fantasy that Trump was a Russian asset and that Robert Mueller was going to validate it. Well, you know, that's old news now. Now we have something going on where uh, a special counsel named John Durham, who was appointed under Trump, is investigating the origins of that investigation and all the FBI malfeasance that went into starting it and keeping it going and keeping the country occupied with fantasies of P-tapes and secret meetings in Prague uh, for more than two years. And because John Durham's investigating the origins of that probe, it's not nearly getting as much uh, attention as the initial scandal Russiagate got because no one cares how all this happened and no one cares about accountability for how the American people were uh, essentially scammed into being fear-mongered about Russian interference and a, a president who was potentially compromised by P-tapes and other blackmail. But cases are ongoing, and the special counsel, John Durham, uh, has brought a case into someone uh, named Igor Danchenko, who is said to be one of the key sources for the Steele dossier. And the Steele dossier was this uh, piece of opposition research that the Clinton campaign paid for back in 2016, and then the FBI used to get surveillance warrants on a member of the uh, Trump campaign. And the still that say basically alleged a widespread conspiracy between Trump and Russia. It turned out to be a complete work of fiction. And so now uh, there is an attempt to find out exactly what happened and uh, how much the FBI knew when it was relying on the Steele dossier and how much it knew that the Steele dossier was a fraud, even when it was citing it for FISA warrants. So here's something that just came out. Uh, this comes from CNN. FBI offered Christopher Steele $1 million to prove dossier claims. Senior FBI analyst testifies. Shortly before the 2016 election, the FBI offered retired British spy Christopher Steele up to $1 million to prove the explosive allegations in his dossier about Donald Trump. A senior FBI analyst testified. The cash offer was made during an overseas October 2016 meeting between Steele and several top FBI officials who were trying to corroborate Steele's claims that the Trump campaign was colluding with Russia to win the election. FBI super, supervisory analyst Brian Otten testified that Steele never got the money because he could not prove the allegations. Otten also said Steele refused to provide the names of any of his sources during that meeting and that Steele didn't give the FBI anything during that meeting that corroborated the claims in his explosive dossier. Otten was testifying at the criminal trial of Igor Danchenko, a primary source for, the Steel, for Steele's dossier, who was being prosecuted by special counsel John Durham. And Danchenko was accused of lying to the FBI when he spoke to them. Uh, he recently uh, was acquitted on all charges in that case. But these revelations that have come out are uh, far more important because they show the level to which the FBI concealed from the FISA court and from uh, the American public that Steele and his dossier, which they were relying on as source material and for leads, couldn't validate any of his uh, allegations, even when they offered him a million dollars to do it. Not, not one, not a single allegation uh, could be validated by Steele. And so uh, CNN goes on, Durham spent a decent chunk of time showing jurors the warrant applications the FBI submitted to surveil former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. Durham highlighted how the FBI kept using information from the Steele dossier to bolster its case to secure the warrants, even after the FBI came up empty in its efforts to corroborate Steele's Wait, claims. I don't understand why they, they offered a million dollars to prove that, like, why did they think a, like a P-tape was going to be this explosive thing about Trump? Like, <laughs> how do they think that was going to, like, ruin his reputation or something? <laughs> well, look, they opened up this investigation uh, – uh, in July of 2016, and they claim they did it for reasons having nothing to do with steel, which I think is false. And I've oh, written okay. about w why that is. So they needed, so but they needed something at this point to make their investigation look credible oh. and to keep it going because they wanted to get surveillance warrants on Carter Page. So the P tape was the answer to that. So they're begging him <laughs> to give us something, anything. We'll give you a million dollars, and he couldn't. He couldn't even do that. Uh, and CNN goes on. Those FISA warrants were roundly criticized. In a 2019 report from the Justice Department Inspector General, which exposed a series of errors, flaws, and omissions, two of the four court-approved warrants on Carter Page were later deemed invalid. 
The Steele dossier contained unverified allegations. That's a nice way of saying uh, fictional allegations, fabricated allegations about Trump's connections to Russia, including his alleged business dealings, rumors of lurid tryst in Moscow, and claims that his campaign collaborated with the Kremlin in 2016. <laughs> On that Yosemite Sam meme <laughs> exactly. that blew our lives just now? <laughs> exactly. Trump vehemently denied the claims, and Steele's work has lost a significant amount of credibility over the years. Translation, it has zero credibility because it was a complete scam. Today, the dossier is largely seen as unproven, as an unproven collection of rumors <laughs> and gossip. Not by CNN uh, fans. <laughs> so here's what I pointed out, and this is interesting. The Steele FBI meeting was on October 3rd, 2016. That's when they offer him a million dollars to corroborate his claims. The FBI's first surveillance warrant on Carter Page was then filed a few weeks later on October 21st. This means that after the FBI offered Steele $1 million to prove his dossier, which he couldn't, the FBI filed a surveillance warrant based on that same dossier anyway. So basically, even though Steele told them, I can't verify anything, they still used it to spy on Carter Page and by extension, the rest of the Trump campaign. I remember that when uh, watching Bill Maher back then when Trump said that they, you know, they were spying on him and they're like, shut up, Trump. They're not spying. <laughs> and it turned out it's exactly what they, and they said, no, we were surveilling him. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Surveilling wasn't spying. So here's the other interesting aspect to all this. So we know, and this has become even more confirmed with the Danchenko trial, that the FBI relied on the Steele dossier for investigative leads and for surveillance warrants uh, on members of the Trump campaign, Carter Page. But they didn't just rely on the Steele dossier. Uh, they also relied on a, a company called CrowdStrike. And CrowdStrike was also, like Steele, contracted by the Clinton campaign's law firm. And CrowdStrike is the firm that generated the original claim that Russia stole the DNC emails. So in this case of the FBI investigating Russian interference and Trump's alleged collusion with it, you have the Clinton campaign being at the heart of the two most foundational claims. The Steele dossier, paid for by Clinton, that generated the collusion claims. And then the Russian hacking claims, the very thing that kicked off Russiagate, that's generated by another Clinton contractor called uh, CrowdStrike. And so I point out here that the FBI used the Clinton fund Steele dossier in its collusion investigation. The FBI also used the Clinton funded CrowdStrike reports in its probe of alleged Russian hacking. Yet get, that gets zero attention despite being equally suspect. Why are you having the FBI rely on a private firm hired by the Clinton campaign in an investigation of allegations of collusion and Russian interference against her opponent, uh, Donald Trump. It's just, it's completely corrupt. And uh, I point this out here, just as it was incredibly suspect for the FBI to use a Clinton campaign contractor, Fusion GPS and Steele, for its conspiracy probe, it is incredibly suspect that the FBI uses a Clinton campaign contractor, CrowdStrike, in its DNC Russian hacking probe, the public deserves answers. And they deserve answers all the more because the one time CrowdStrike testified under oath after they first generated the claim that Russia hacked the DNC and kicked off Russiagate, they admitted that actually they had no concrete evidence for their allegations. So this is what Sean Henry said under oath. He's the CEO of CrowdStrike in December 2017. Uh, we did not have concrete evidence that the data was exfiltrated from the DNC, from the server. But we have indications that it was exfiltrated. What he's saying is we don't have concrete evidence for the claim that we made that Russia hacked the DNC. He goes on to say there are times when we can see data exfiltrated and we can say conclusively. But in this case, it appears it was set up to be exfiltrated, but we just don't have the evidence that says it actually left. So what do you say? Yeah. He's saying that we don't have any evidence that these alleged Russian hackers actually took anything from the server. He said that privately, publicly, CrowdStrike was accusing Russia of hacking the DNC server. Oh, wow. And so I've tried to get some answers on this. So we've seen the Steele dossier, right? Ever, the public has all seen it. It's being put out. We all know it's a fraud. We haven't seen these CrowdStrike reports, which the FBI used to then accuse Russia of hacking the DNC. And I've tried to obtain these CrowdStrike reports under the Freedom of Information Act, uh, but I've been denied. Wow. And, and when I uh, when I uh, first tried, the FBI only acknowledged to me the existence of one of these CrowdStrike reports when I know for a fact that there's three. But recently, somebody else brought a different case and got more information from the FBI. But all the FBI would release is not the actual reports from CrowdStrike, but just the cover pages. So all the FBI is willing to release is the cover page Wait, to the CrowdStrike report. Is that redacted? Report. What's the white spot? That's redacted. Yes, that's redacted. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> the Clinton campaign paid for a company to then claim that Russia hacked the DNC. The FBI then used that company's reports for its then subsequent claims that Russia hacked the DNC. The public, though, cannot see these reports, even though they're produced by a private company. All we can see right now is a redacted cover page. Hey, we're going to see you in Miami, West Palm Beach, Denver, Palm Springs, Austin, Burbank. That's right. The Saturday after Thanksgiving here in Burbank and lots of dates in Los Angeles in December. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all our tickets and join our premium program when you go there, too.